a trend seen by Almighty God, and he revealed this trend to the prophets. It was the growing in the hearts and the minds of the people of falsehood and hunger for things of the flesh, and a, a kind of uh, hypocritical commitment to religion. For the Holy Quran says here in this verse, for that mankind did not believe with assurance in our signs. That there were many people in the religion who were not really in the religion, but their hearts and their minds were in something else. Things that would only serve them. And that their allegiance was not a true allegiance. They, was not, they were not really firmly grounded in faith. And they took the signs and the promises of Almighty God lightly. They didn't seriously believe in those signs and wonders. But God revealed it to his prophets that there is coming a time, don't fret yourself over the condition of these people. You know the man who is sincere and really totally committed to serve God and the good cause in society. It pains his heart, and he suffers a lot, because he's so often disappointed. He struggles and he gives of himself, he sacrifices himself, he prays to God and seeks God all the night long sometimes staying up the whole night. He comes out in the morning and he begins working hard to try to put together the, the divine message in common language, in simple terms for the people. A truth that is the greatest truth in existence. A greater truth than the truth of higher mathematics. A greater truth than the truth of complicated uh, chemical and physical terms and concepts. The truth that is the ultimate truth, the absolute truth, the truth upon which all other truth is supported, the truth that evolves or manifests all other truth. Now he has to take that perfect truth, that ultimate truth, that truth upon which all other truths are based, and then explain it in simple terms for people who are not educated, for people who perhaps never finished high school, many never finished grade school. So he has to struggle with concepts and terminology, with ideas, struggle with concepts and ideas and terminology that the people are not used to hearing, that they've never heard before because they've never been taught these things. He has to struggle with this and present it in a package that their simple minds can grasp. And after struggling all night long and all day long, and then struggling before them to get them to see that the reality is everywhere, that truth is everywhere, that you are a force for truth, that you are yourself an embodiment of truth, that you don't have to look outside of yourself if you will just begin to radiate from within, radiate from without the things that you find within yourself, if you will stop smothering your own truth and let it come out, you'll see the light. And he struggles and he struggles with the people. And many of them come around and look like new plants coming up out of the ground. And flowers look like beautiful flowers. And they look like the, the, the creation has been made. That here is God's creation. A miracle has been performed. He walk away and come back the next day and he find those flowers are the purple dead looking flowers of poison. And they are poisoning the garden, poisoning the atmosphere. Vines that are weed-like, struggling in the, against the growth of the healthy things, 
choking out the wheat, as the Bible says. The calf, choking out the wheat, killing the food of the congregation. Is that right? Yes. So he looked at that and his heart is crushed. But God always come back to the good man and let him know that you don't have to fret over these useless, trashy people. Let them live on on earth. They can't avoid what's coming after them. Leave them alone. They're on the right path to get what they are rightly do. So I've lived on this earth not for many, many years, but I'm over 40 now. And I have to thank you for a nice celebration here in my honor. And I received a beautiful scroll, and I really appreciate I feel as though I had a big birthday celebration. Uh, and I really thank you for that. And I'm sure that those who have knowledge weren't celebrating my birthday. They were celebrating the birth of truth among them. And that's the real thing to his last prophet, the universal prophet Muhammad. He has shown us the ways of the corrupted people and the liars, the hypocrites. And he has shown us that he is ever in command, that he's ever in charge of all affairs in the skies and on earth, and that we don't have to worry about the advances that the wicked world are making. For all of their advances are advances toward their doom. We know that in the life of the individual, and I have experienced it, I have witnessed it, Judgment comes before he passes away. Many of us think that great deceivers, cruel taskmasters, monstrous tyrants that suppress and oppress and torture and cause the people to suffer unbearable things, we think because they live to see long life, 70, 80 years on earth, and pass out with their wealth and with their fame, we think that they have not been punished in life. And I've heard many of our tearful people grieving and weeping over their own condition and wondering why God would let such evil people live so long and progress so much in there and go out without being punished. Well, let me tell you, I can't bring those persons to you, dig them up out of the ground, and put them back into their form, and give them their life back, and force them to tell you the truth. But let me tell you, you just have to take my word for it, not a one pass out of this world physically without getting his punishment. He gets it in one form or the other. God doesn't have to take your wealth from you to punish you. He doesn't have to deny you your followers to punish you. To punish you. He can let you keep your wealth and keep your fame with your hypocritical followers. The followers of a hypocrite, the followers of a liar, the followers of a tyrant are themselves artificial, you see? So God let them stay together. But don't think he didn't reach into the brain of that man and torture the chambers of his mind. Don't think that he didn't stick his hand into the chest of that man and choke and torture his heart for letting his heart and mind deviate from the path of truth. Every soul that come on this earth and commit evils against society, they are punished in this life, and the Holy Quran says, and they shall be given a worse punishment in the next. The Holy Quran says that God says here that he will call the beast to speak to them. You who remember the Bible teaching on the beast, there are two pictures that, that come before my mind quite clearly now. One is the donkey who carries his master. 
and uh, sees before him an angel. This is the Bible, Old Testament, with a flaming sword in his hand. And when he sees the angel, the donkey stalks. He stops and refused to carry his master any further. He speaks to the master and he says, Why have you struck me these three times? Then in the New Testament, there is the finale of the whole uh, scene, the whole stage activity, from uh, the serpent in the garden <clears throat> to the beast in the sea, in Revelation, or in the lake, pardon me, in Revelation. And this beast is seen by the prophet going down into a lake of fire. Now. <clears throat> We know that picture language is a good way to get ideas over to people who are not acquainted with the language of abstract ideas or abstract things. So when you take these abstract ideas, these uh, concepts and complicated uh, uh, descriptions of things, complicated explanations of things, uh, and uh, give them to the people in picture language, they can grasp those ideas. So <clears throat> long ago, the teachers discovered the simple fact that God, the Creator, not God in man, God, the Creator, that God, the Creator, is the best of teachers. And how did God, the Creator, teach the man? He taught the man first with pictures. When you open your eyes to this physical world, you see physical pictures. Before you can learn the language of your mother and your father, you have already begun reading some of the language of Almighty God. Is that right? And His language has begun to create you in your body before your mother and your father can ever reach you. Because they don't have the power to reach your mind before God reach your mind. Because God don't make you in their image. He makes you in the image that he chooses for you. Is that right? So they can't speak to you when you come fresh from the womb. But God begins to speak to you. He shows you the light outside. And he contrasts it and show you the darkness. Is that right? He, he it, it lets you experience quiet in the womb of your mother for nine months and then throw you out into a noisy world and speak to your mind with noise. Is that right? He speaks to you with extremes and begins shaking you up inside, making the atoms of your being quicken and come into activity so that your mind will begin turning over and over to try to understand what is this message God is trying to give me through my physical eyes, through my physical ears, through the physical flesh. What is God trying to say to me? And the book says God is trying to say to you that this is only the beginning of a marvelous creation. watering and plowing and stirring up the ground of your being so that I can cause that seed that I put there divinely to burst forth so that my real man will take form in the flesh. Is that right? All right. So the deceivers come along and they reverse God's way and tell the people fairy tales that have no base in reality. They take and twist the picture language of God 
and twist it into some fairy tale language and separate it from its base in reality and tell the people, no, this is not talking about your sinful flesh. This is not talking about the sinful creation, this material world. They tell the people that this is talking about something up there that has reality up there and doesn't have reality down here. That this is false and up there is real. That demons are in the, in the earth, in the heart of the earth. And that this whole physical world is a hellish world. Just the surface itself is torment. But when you die, your soul is going to sink beneath the surface into the interior of the earth, and there the Satan will be waiting with a pitchfork to take your soul and pitch it up and throw it into the open furnace of fire. Is that right? And he's going to torture you forever and ever. You will never come out of that. Uh, and for what will he torture me, dear sir? He will do that to you for lying. He will do that to you for committing fleshly adultery and fleshly fornication, for stealing a, a, a bread, a loaf of bread. Is that right? Yes. For not confessing Jesus Christ that he is the only begotten Son of God, God in the flesh, died in his blood, his precious holy blood, innocent blood, paid for your sins. If you don't confess this, you will go down in the heart of earth, even if I didn't lie, even if you didn't lie, even if I didn't steal a loaf of bread, even if you didn't steal a loaf of bread, even if I didn't commit uh, fleshly fornication and adultery, even if you didn't commit fleshly fornication and adultery, you will still go down to the fiery furnace and Satan will burn you forever and ever and ever. And minds accept that and give their bodies and their souls to the preacher in the church and go to their death believing fairy tales. Not white lies, cruel, monstrous lies. Oh, man. Why would you come back from your trip and start laughing? <laughs> and start lashing out at Christians and the church and Christianity. Why attack Jesus Christ? You have misunderstood me. I haven't yet attacked Christians. I haven't yet attacked Christ. I've only attacked foreign lies that have been given to Christians that shouldn't be with Christians and have been charged to Jesus who's innocent of all those lies. Says he will cause the beast to speak to them. All right, let's move on. We should ask the question, why is the minister here? Why does the minister constantly come out here and force us to get back into our holy image? Why is the minister so determined to keep us with our hand on the handle of truth? and our eyes looking at God, the author of truth. Why is he here insisting that we remain a congregation, an orderly congregation, and that we have leadership in an orderly society, that we have self-government in the individual, and that we respect government in the society and in the world? Why does the chief minister continue to insist upon these things? I give you the answer that all the servants of God gave from time without end. And that is this. There is a precious creation that God has made. 
That creation is the human essence, the human substance, the human nature, the human mind and soul and spirit. And those people and persons who don't want to come into this nature, who don't want to be human beings, they long ago decided that they were going to keep human beings from coming into power on earth. And the human being stood up and he tried to fight the fight alone, but he couldn't make it. Because those deceivers had got the jump on the human being. They were greedy for the physical world, so they got the physical materials before the human being could get strong on earth. They came into material power, and they used the superiority of physical weapons to keep the, 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 the good people, the innocent people, under their feet. And the people prayed out to God, Oh God, show us a way. Show us a way. Give us a way out of this prison cell that these materialist monsters have put us in. Give us a way out of this hell of moral corruption that these wicked sinners keep us in. And the book says, God answered the prayer of the righteous caller. And he said, let me explain this thing to you. And he said that I said, before I made the human being, to the angel, that I'm going to make a ruler in the earth. I'm going to make him of mud, stinky earth. And I'm going to fashion that muddy, stinking, stinky earth into shape. 